The big day is coming for Tesla shareholders and for Elon Musk and for the Tesla board for everyone. And it's coming very, very soon because it's coming November 6th for the annual shareholder meeting. And in this meeting, all the buzz, all the focus is about one big topic that is making news around the entire globe. And that topic is the $1 trillion compensation package for Elon. In case you didn't know, Elon wants to get from the shareholders approved a pay package that would pay him one trillion, one thousand billion, or one million million dollars in shares if he brings Tesla value up to eight point five trillion dollars market cap from currently roughly one point five trillion. The deal is of course making a lot of headlines because when was the last time you got paid a trillion dollars? It happens very rarely or technically it never happened in the history of the world. It didn't even happen to any lesser extent that is reasonable. No one even got paid a hundred billion. The only person who got paid 50 billion was Elon before, but then a judge took it away from him. So this matters a lot because it's a sign of the times to come. It is a sign of the age of AGI where unlimited wealth can be created and the wealth creators will get rewarded. And we should not forget that Elon only gets that money if he makes us, the shareholders, 600%. If your stocks go up 600%, roughly, then he gets paid a small amount of that, 15% or something. So that's a very reasonable deal if you go, don't get distracted from uh, by these crazy absolute numbers, but it's never about absolute numbers. If someone generates you 600%, are you going to pay him 15% of your gains? Yes, of course. It matters a lot because this is not just about money. In fact, it might not be about money at all for Elon. And he said that in the earnings call. First of all, we have to understand that Elon did not get paid since 2018 because he had a pay package that paid him 50 billion if he hit certain goals, also like 6x or 7x, whatever, like a crazy appreciation for shareholders. We technically are Elon's boss, we the shareholders, collectively, right? We vote on these things, we need to approve it. And the deal on the table for us back in 2018 was, well, if Elon increases the value of the company by 10x or whatever it was, 9x, 900%, are we willing to pay him 15%? And we all said, of course, are you kidding me? Sure, sure, right? And then a judge in Delaware, an activist judge, Biden donor connected and all kinds of stuff. She hated Elon and she basically said, oh, I know, we, we make it illegal. We just rule, he can't get paid. And it was crazy because the shareholders voted for it. Elon wanted it, the board voted for it. Everything was completely perfect. And then this judge said, no. It led to an implosion of Delaware as a state of incorporation. Companies fled left and right. Silicon Valley pulled the plug on Delaware. Now they're in crisis. The governor tries to fix it. The Supreme Court tries to overthrow this ruling. It's a giant mess. But the bottom line is Tesla said goodbye with a lot of other huge companies. They all said goodbye, Delaware. You are nuts. You cannot just, you know, interfere with our contracts like that and tell the shareholders, bye-bye money. Tell Elon, bye-bye money. You can't do that. Who take, uh, Tesla reincorporated in Texas is now domesticated, domiciled, not domesticated, domiciled in Texas. And it's a whole new world. And so now we are voting again on this pay package to make him whole, but also incentivize him for the future. Everyone who's in any reasonable way thinking straight wants this. Hey, creating these videos is a lot of work. Please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Now let's get back to the video. And Elon basically said about this, something very interesting on the earnings call. He basically said, I don't need the money. This is not about pay, even though it's fair to pay me. But for him, it's about control. It's about control and not pay. And why control? Because Elon says, I'm not building the world's greatest robot army of billions of these robots and AGI. And then someone can kick me out of this company and take this robot army over. And Elon is not kidding about these things. He likes sci-fi. But he was also building the future and he's right. This is not just a company for him. He's not just an entrepreneur. He believes in what he's doing. Same for me. I believe in what I'm doing. This is never just a company if you really believe in something. I believe in Pioneer Lands, by the way, right? I would never allow anyone other than all of the citizens to kick me out of Pioneer Lands. Not some weirdo who can just, you know, do some stock tricks and then control the board. And he says, no, 
I'm not going to put all my effort and, you know, thinking into this and build all these amazing technologies just to be kicked out. And he says, I don't need total control. I don't need 51% voting control, but I want at least 25%. That is the line in the sand for Elon. He said, this has to happen. He has to be cautious what he says. He cannot be threatening and he cannot you know, be intimidating. Otherwise, the vote could not count. So he can't say anything. You have to do that or otherwise I'm doing this. But he makes it very clear this is non-negotiable. And for us, we should all have an interest in getting this done. Okay, so let's get to the key question. Will he get the vote or not? Because make no mistake, if this vote fails, say goodbye to your shares. This could be one of the greatest drops of Tesla stock in the history of Tesla stock. And if you know the history of Tesla stock, that wouldn't be very good. So we should make very sure that we understand the vote status and we should understand if this gets approved or not. And if it's not getting approved, ooh, we have to hedge our position. Okay, let's go all the way back to last year where we actually had that vote. Let's pull out the numbers we know about. So in June of 2024, we had the vote on the old package because this crazy judge who overruled it led to a new vote of the shareholders where they reapproved the old package, but it didn't help because the judge is crazy. So what happened? So there was a giant campaign across all the retail shareholders. Very exciting. Alexandra Mertz, you know, Tesla boomer mama, she led this big, big kind of war path. Let us all on a war path. And we all succeeded under the great lead of Alexandra. So that was amazing. Tesla retail shareholders overwhelmingly voted for it, but also the institutions were much very important. They voted less overwhelming for it, but also for it. And all of that resulted in a 73% approval. Okay. So that's the number to look at. Last time we did this last year on a very similar pack, basically it's a very similar package, similar logic. And you think it's 56 billion versus 1 trillion. It's actually not true. You have to think in percentage of shares, right? Because it's only 1 trillion because Tesla will be at 8 trillion, 8.5 trillion when he gets it. That's why it's a trillion. 56 billion is measured in a trillion or something. So it's basically 5%, whatever. Like it's a very similar. It's actually not this dissimilar. The new package is not that much bigger than the old package because these billions are expressed in shares, percentage of shares. 73% voted for it. That's the baseline. That's what we have to look at. And in order to lose this vote, we would have to drop from 73% under 50%. Now, is it likely that suddenly we had 73% and suddenly we lose a third of that vote? Not likely. Let's go through some math. The reason number one, why I believe it will pass easily. Let's assume 10% deviation. Then you look at a range from 65% to 80%. Okay. Let's assume a 20% deviation. 20% deviation for what reason? Like I wouldn't even know why. Why would it deviate the vote so much from same time last year? Not 20%. But even if it would deviate 20%, we had 59% on the low end and 87 on the high end. That's still about 50% pretty easily, 59. So reason number one, on that high base of 73%, we should be pretty safe. There would be massive deviation to fall below 50. But there's a reason number two that most people don't even know about. That is a very important reason. Unlike the 2018 pay deal, Musk will be allowed to vote his shares this time, giving him about 13.5% of Tesla's voting power, says Reuters. And normally Reuters is fake news, but here, you know, this is probably not fake news. The 2025 compensation vote, it appears, Musk can vote his stake. 13% of Tesla is owned by Elon and he is a shareholder, so he can vote on it. And this time it will count toward the outcome of the vote. Whereas in the prior 2024 type vote, it was explicitly excluded, right? Or treated differently. So that is a very big deal because of a bunch of reasons that we don't go into right now. The Elon shares did not count. So now they count. And so you basically have to add, I mean, it's a little more complicated math, but roughly you have to add 13% to these numbers. And if you, so even if we drop in approval 20% from last year for no good reason to 59, we can add the 13% of Elon on top of it. And therefore, you know, I believe the most likely outcome is, that's my number, by the way, it's just fun to bet on these things, but my number is 85% approval. Let's see if I'm right or not. So once the vote is done, you can compare the real outcome, but I think we will hit roughly 85% approval, maybe 84, 83 to 85. 
uh, because of these reasons. Okay, and then the reason number three, by the way, is it's a complete stock suicide to vote no, and everyone knows it. Even the people who want to vote no because of the terrible Glass Lewis and ISS proxy advisors. Different video. I'm going to go into this. There's a whole dark, dark world of deranged people out there who have tremendous power over corporate America. The proxy advisors, Glass Lewis, a Canadian company, and ISS, owned by Deutsche Börse, by German company, they can basically dictate a lot of things in America for no good reason. And these people are completely deranged. And we'll go into this in a different video. Fortunately, thanks to the Trump administration, they're also under investigation for being deranged and for doing very unconstitutional stuff, violating all kinds of constitutional rules and other rules in the United States with a very, very bad ideology. But these people basically say vote no, and that's why there are even people voting no. But anyone with any brain left understands a no vote would be the absolute devastation would be the consequence for the stock price the next day. So reason number three is shareholders still want to not lose too much money. So the shareholders voting no on this want to basically destroy their stock. That's also why only people who are actually having other people's shares would vote no. No one who actually owns shares would vote no. So the only no voters are people who just manage other people's shares who don't care if the share goes down. But most people are not like that. So that's the reason number three. Okay, that is my takeaway. That is my takeaway. We have to understand that Tesla is not an established company, but a startup. It's the world's greatest startup, the world's greatest entrepreneurial endeavor, because 90% of Tesla's future value by the year 2030 is derived from two new business lines, Optimus and Autonomy. If that would fall away, you know, Tesla's projected stock price for 2030 in my model would drop 90%. We need Optimus, do not robots, and we need Robotaxi to become true. And the instrumental factor for that is Elon Musk. Everyone knows it because you need an entrepreneur on top who's very, very deeply entrenched in this and has a complete dedication to this. And that is Elon. That is my, why my prediction bottom line is a firm yes, firm yes with actually, let's type it in. Let's say 83% is my best bet, 84%. 84% is my best bet. That is a number. You can hold me accountable if I'm wrong. I will be right. That is approved, but it would be fun if I'm also right on the 84%. I would be roughly right, but it would be nice to be very right. 84% yes vote is my bet, but we only need 51. And I would also say it's 80 to 90% priced into the stock, which means there is not much to see here in terms of stock movement. And let's conclude this video with what we all want to know. What about the stock move? Well, it depends what happens into the event. I think this event will see the following. If we see no run up of the stock, if the stock is flat from here and this thing gets approved, as I say, it will, the stock will move up a little bit after and be relieved, right? If we have a strong run up into the event, we will see a drop after because that's how it goes. Sell the news, right? People get too enthusiastic about it and then it just happens and it's like, okay, now what? And then it drops. If it just chucks along, goes up a little higher, then it's probably no major move. So if we go to 460 or something, I think it's going to drop. If we go to 420, I think it's going to go up. If we chug along and are at 445, probably nothing is going to happen. That's my best bet, but we will cover this much more in depth when we get very close to November 6th, because that is the fun part of this game. I hope that was interesting and see you very soon.